Angela Fazio is an industry powerhouse who has overseen 40,000 homes sold and 9 billion in production. And Kristen Cantrell is one of the nation's most accomplished team leaders, helping thousands of agents build their businesses. They are passionate about educating, encouraging, and empowering moms in real estate. Our next episode starts now. Hey everyone, welcome to Moms in Real Estate. I'm Angela Fazio. And I'm Kristen Cantrell. And today we're talking to Kendra Nihus. And I'm so excited, you guys. She's doubled her production in the last year. And when I asked her like why that was, she told me that she really focused on uh, one word and it was consistency. So she's gonna really dive into that with us today. Yeah, well, let's get started. I'm so excited to hear, hopefully get some good tips. So Kendra, tell us a little bit of background about yourself. Hi guys. First off, I Hi. want to say thanks so much for asking me to be on. Um, a little bit about me. I uh, live in Queen Creek, Arizona, and I'm a native to Arizona. So I've, I was born and raised here, been here my whole life. Um, I have a husband. I've been married. It'll be eight years in September. And we have two beautiful children. We have a six-year-old daughter and an almost five-year-old son. Um, I've been licensed since 2017, so coming up on four years, um, and I love everything that has to do with God, my family, and real estate. Wait, you forgot one thing. Yes, you did. A very important part. Wine. <laughs> wine. Yes, you're right. Absolutely. <laughs> never, never forsake That's wine. I, like, I literally was like, I know what she loves. She's going to say Jesus. Real estate, her kids, Family. and wine. wine. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I absolutely do. Did I just awesome. lose the video? Oh, there we go. Um, I do love wine. That is my recreation. <laughs> <laughs> my well, hobby. Well, tell us a little bit. Like, you're still a new agent. Four years. And in the last year, doubling production is super, super amazing. But I want to talk about, like, what led up to that like tell us about your beginnings and how you kind of built your business and then tell us like with being consistent how that changed your business yeah sure so good question um i started off at a small boutique brokerage in gilbert and i met some amazing women who were already in real estate um and i got some really good guidance as a new agent and with uh, building some foundation um, in November of 2019, uh, brokerage change was happening. And so I switched my brokerages and, um, still went over to a place. I have an amazing broker now. I will give him a small shout out, Mike Swackhart with ProSmart Realty. Um, and he's been in business a long time as well. He has given us, um, so much support. And so when I had made that switch and we were, Kind of, I was getting my footing again. Um, even still being a new agent, I um, I decided that 2020 I was going to focus on a word called consistent, and I wanted to be consistent in all aspects of my life. I wanted to do consistency in my business, consistency um, in my relationships, both personal and business, and I wanted to be consistent with parenting and my marriage, and also consistent with my faith. So. It was really important that I consistently um, made sure that I was fostering that spiritual part of my life, too, to make sure that I could support all those other aspects that take up a lot of energy and time so I could be there for everyone else. Um, consistency with work, how it changed it is, I mean, the proof is in the numbers. It doubled my production. And um, I think those small actions every single day but being consistent with making sure that i'm following up with clients making sure that my communication um is clear making sure that i'm consistent with learning so I, for those that are not in real estate that maybe are listening to this we do have to take continuing education and continuing to educate myself in all parts of the industry just that honest consistency it just, it really, it, it just, it proved to work. I mean, 
doubling well, production so is huge. It's such a simple thing, but it's so true. Like if you, and, and I love that you took it because I, I know everyone will like try to be really consistent in their, in their business and they don't think about it with their family or faith. Sometimes I love that you just were like, I'm going to be consistent everywhere. I, mm -hmm. I have a question. So can you give us some practical like steps that you took? Let's just start with your business. Some practical sure. steps that you did or put in place to foster that consistency. Sure, that's excellent. So one thing that I consistently do is I have a calendar. I have a desk calendar. I have my calendar in my phone. And I consistently put in every appointment I made, every phone call I told someone I would make, every follow-up call I told someone I would give them. Um, and I or and I put I put everything in there that I can possibly get my hands on. So if I happen to get someone's birthday and I get somebody's anniversary and I get um, and all those things. I remember hearing at the very beginning of real estate, but you're so overwhelmed with information and what you could be doing and should be doing this small act. If I had started this back immediately when I had gotten licensed, I couldn't even imagine where my business would be. I mean, I'm I'm. So grateful to God where it's at today. I couldn't even imagine what it would have been if I had started that from the very beginning. But <laughs> that small act of looking at my calendar every single day and then every night looking back at my calendar saying, okay, what do I have going on tomorrow? What is What do I need to make time for tomorrow? That one small act of consistency of looking at my calendar every single night and every single morning changed what I focused on each day. Yeah, and we hear this from a lot of our moms in real estate, like the calendar is everything. Oh, yeah. If it's not on my calendar, it doesn't happen. Yeah, we actually just had uh, Lacey Lehman do a Girl Educate Yourself. It's on our profile if you guys go to our Instagram page, but she totally lives by her calendar, just like you're saying, and gave similar advice, which is so good. You guys, it's so true to stick with it. I am like, like you said, you have a desktop calendar and then you have your calendar on your phone. I just bought a huge calendar for my kitchen because I'm like, I'm missing all the things with my kids school. Even if it's in my, my digital calendar, I'm like, I need it in front of my face and I need another set of eyes. So my husband sees it. So I was like, I'm going to buy it. I bought the cutest, huge wall calendar. So if anybody wants to see it, you have to take a picture of it. And post I'll take it. a picture and post it. It's so cute. Yes, yeah. please do. How long did I, it take you? How long did it take you to get, um, like, I'm sure it was uncomfortable and inconsistent at first, but how long would you say it took to become like habitually consistent? Um, I don't know if I could really put like a time frame on it. I just started off with, you know, I have my calendar, obviously I have the things in there, like my family's birthdays and maybe some relatives and friends birthdays. And then I started adding mm -hmm. to it and adding to it. So I would probably say by last summer, back when COVID had hit, unfortunately, and everyone's calendars, I mean, did our calendars even really matter because our kids, <laughs> our kids were over here and our husbands were over here and everyone's working, you know, it was nuts. But anyway, I would definitely say by summer, I had a, I had a full calendar like you were saying, Kristen, I've got a calendar on the indoor inside of my kitchen cabinet. I've got another mm -hmm. calendar in my closet of my bedroom. I have my desk calendar at my office. I have my calendar on my phone. Mm -hmm. I have a calendar in my kid's playroom. I have calendars <laughs> everywhere. But I, it would probably be, it was about a good six months before it became a habit where if someone said, um, hey, we'd really like to, you know, we're thinking about moving, you know, you know blah, blah, blah. I'd think, okay. I'm going to go write down Smith. And then I would go out like a week and I would write call Smith about, you know, XX property. And then every, every night when I look at my calendar, I'm like, what do I need to do tomorrow? Okay. And then it would just be these small reminders. And then mm -hmm. that just kind of, it just all builds on each other. One thing that I started doing in the last like six months that I've never done for some reason is when I book an appointment, I'm sending them a calendar invite. So it holds them accountable because it's, I mean, it has been such a great change in my business as far as people forgetting about our appointments or whatever. But I feel like when I create my calendar invite on all appointments, I'm trying to get their email and send it to them for them to accept because I do feel like it makes them like, oh yeah, 
I remember it's there and it doesn't get blown off as much. Yeah, I think that's powerful. And the other thing I just found out is our KV Core system. If you put tasks in KV Core, can, it can um, sync to your Google Calendar. Well, that's great. I know. I need reminders. I do too. It's uh, Chris and I talk all the time. I wish I could think in a straight line for like two full minutes. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I agree. I absolutely We're both myself. like this. Me and her need like a... A different person. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this analogy, but for uh, women and especially us as moms, because we have lots of schedules we're juggling, but a woman's brain is like walking into a room and there are several rows of TVs, like as if you could imagine someone was watching multiple football games <laughs> and they have all these TVs and you like that is our that like a woman's brain is like that. We have all these TVs on and we oh, yeah. can tell you at any given moment what TV is playing what and what TV <laughs> will be switching to the next thing and who, what program is going to be coming on because that's our life. You know, we have all of our kids, we uh -huh. have our husbands, we have our clients, we have our significant others. That's us. Yeah. That's what we do as moms. And that's what we do, you know, even in this business with multiple clients that have different needs and wants that we are fostering all the time. Yeah, for sure. I like that word consistency. I'm going to probably have to start chanting that to myself. <laughs> yeah, like maybe we can tattoo it on our arms. Like, yeah, right. We need this. <laughs> right next to Jesus. My new <laughs> word. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, beautiful. I love that. Oh, that's awesome. my favorite. It's my favorite. No one ever guessed, has to guess what I believe. <laughs> if you yeah. knew Angela, you wouldn't know this, but she wants tattoos everywhere. I wish I had them everywhere. She wants them everywhere. Oh, you're brave. I can't, uh, I, I, I don't think I could sit through that. <laughs> but I love, I love that. I absolutely love that. The one thing I do want to add on to with this, having that consistent word. So this year I've adopted the word forward and I kind of felt like the word forward, you know, it could be used in so many different facets. We move are moving forward from COVID in any direction, whatever that looks like for that individual, whether it's getting vaccinated or um, whether it's, you know, making sure that we're in a safe place, whatever that looks like to everyone. Um, but also moving forward just spiritually and personally and, um, I, we just finished this series that our pastor had at church and it was in the book of Ruth. And, um, he's talking about how they were in this place called Moab, which Moab means idleness and comfort. And they went back to Bethlehem and Bethlehem means to be in the word. And it means to be going forward. So, um, although they were uncomfortable because the comfort was back in Moab, they kept pushing forward and they decided to go back to where it was uncomfortable. But going back to where it was uncomfortable brought them peace and many things that um, you find if you, if you read the book, if Ruth, you'll understand more completely. But that's kind of the focus this year is forward. So real estate, I love that. Whatever, whatever my failures were last year, I'm going to move forward. Mm -hmm. And whatever maybe some of our... Um, fears were last year with COVID, I'm going to move forward, whatever that looks like to the individual person. And then in business and in family, you know, there's things that we all fall short on, but moving forward, I feel like is the best and most positive way to, to grow, to become better, to heal relationships. I mean, you could use that word in so many different aspects, but yeah, I love that because we talk about all the time. I love the way you said that. I do we, too. Because we talk about it all the time. You're either moving forward or you're moving backwards. There isn't any such thing as being comfortable in one place. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. to focus on the forward, just the way that you described that. And I love the book of Ruth. I love it. I love all the, I love the, the romantic part of it. I love how everything turned out so good. I love that. I love that book. Have you read that? You I haven't. No, I'm all excited. It's really now. good. Yeah. Um, so that's with Naomi and Boaz, right? Yes, I have. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, that the way that you described that out of Moab and into Bethlehem, yeah. that concept of constantly press, pressuring yourself to take uncomfortable steps mm -hmm. so that God can release blessing in your life. And that's true yeah. for every area of your life. Oh, and yeah. think about like, oh go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, just think about almost anything like that has to be refined, like a metal. 
it, it has to be burned or a bush that has to be pruned in order to grow and bear more, you know, more fruit or more tree blossoms or more leaves. It's just, if we stay comfortable, that can be okay. And there's nothing wrong with being comfortable, mm -hmm. but sometimes comfortable doesn't allow us to um, continue to sharpen our skills or continue to foster relationships and things like that. So, and it doesn't have to be this catapult forward, you know, it can be this just ever slowly moving towards, you know, being a better version of yourself, whatever that might look like. That's right. I agree. Yeah. We're always talking about like, get comfortable being uncomfortable, you know, and I feel like right? I'm always uncomfortable. <laughs> I, yeah. I feel like I've worked with Angela for over five years now and I've never been comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, we push each other pretty hard. We do. <laughs> that's what doing. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. It sounds like it's a good uncomfortable though. It's okay for us to be that way. It, totally. it keeps us vulnerable. It keeps us teachable. I love it. Yeah. So true. I love everything you've said. It's I know. Been it was so wonderful. great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you for sharing those. The way that you describe that's going to stick with me. So I really appreciate that. I do too. Yes, of course. I we've been in. It's kind of funny. It's like a joke now at our church right now because our pastor. We are still in the Book of Ruth, and we were in verse one through six for like six weeks, and he kept saying, <laughs> he kept telling us. Well, we can just stay here until everyone can can at least recite verses one through six, but um, <laughs> because we've been in it for so long. But so many great things have come out of it, and I've I love to I, I try and apply a lot of that into work as well because I love to serve people. I love to, and that's kind of what our business is, right? I mean, yep. we're we are in the trenches with people and some of their largest decisions of their life and some of their largest investments and it's emotional and if we i you know you guys feel connect with these people have compassion have mercy when they fall short i mean mm -hmm. has, haven't we all been in a situation where our buyer decided to buy furniture during the loan process and yes we just have to have mercy at for them at that time and compassion and it's just, I agree. That's yeah, the, yeah, the book constantly. Uh, God tells us exactly how to run our business. All you have to do is read about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just love on these people. I mean, isn't that what we all want is to be loved and accepted? Yes, 100%. Well, I'm yeah. I'm so grateful for all your w words of wisdom. And we want to also just remind our audience, if you haven't heard yet, we are going to have an unbelievable Moms in Real Estate event in April. Um, and we want to invite our audience. You can mm -hmm. come if Kendra, if you can come, people you can meet. Oh, Kendra, Kendra. you're coming. Yeah, you can meet her <laughs> face to face. It's April 22nd and mm -hmm. April 23rd. We're going to be sending out some details or posting details. But in an in essence, it's like on April 22nd, we're gonna get together, have wine, coffee, whatever you want, and listen to two amazing outside speakers. And then that night mm -hmm. we arranged for a private VIP dinner just for us girls. Mm -hmm. And then the next morning we're going to have a girl educate yourself summit, which is girl educate yourself style talks all in a row. Yep. So, so super short, mm -hmm. many lessons for like two hours. It's going to yes. be so fun. Yeah. So we invite you Kendra and yes. if you want to meet Kendra and you want to meet two of us and all these other amazing women, put it on your calendar. It's going to be here in Chandler, Arizona. Yeah, I, that sounds awesome. I didn't know anything about that. I would love to do that. I love, I love, love, love being around people that are like-minded and that are, and I wish I had a better word for that because I feel like a lot of people say that. I know. Let's come up with another word. I totally aligned. agree. Aligned is great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, aligned. Yeah, just yeah. aligning yourself. Yeah, there you go. Oh my gosh, we just had a light bulb. Yes, We've been we trying did. to name Think this event. The first one aligned when you were talking about forward i was like maybe, maybe it's that. forward no, but no it's, it's a line it's a line cool okay thank you you just That's, gave us the name thank you <laughs> perfect <laughs> i'm glad that that came to you perfect and i do have <laughs> i kind of an announcement as well that i've been uh, saving a little bit because it's something i've been discussing with some um close people around me in my circle um and i because of all this growth I am actually, I'm actually going to be looking to take on a buyer's agent. I'm going to expand nice. because awesome. I need the help. Need the help. So, yeah. <laughs> yes, you do. If anyone That's is awesome. out there, what's that? 
I said, that is awesome. Um, so we're going to, and it was kind of, it was, on. it was one of my conversations with you too, Kristen as well. Um, but it was kind of like, yeah, girl, it sounds like that's the next step. That's the next step forward. There's that word forward. There it is. So, uh, I'm looking for a buyer's agent. We're expanding and we're growing. So, um, if anyone is out there, whether you've been in the business for 10 years or you are just going to go take your test tomorrow, I would be happy to sit down and um, start meeting with some people who would like to come on as a buyer's agent and um, grow. Just go go forward and grow. Yes, that's, that's great to hear. And absolutely, I think people will be blessed to work with you. Oh, that's so sweet. Well, Thank you, Kendra. Don't jump off, but I'm going to end the podcast and we're going to talk a little bit after. You guys, thank you so much for listening today and put April 22nd and 23rd on your calendar. Yes.